Sunset House. The caravan plunged into the darkness of dawn, and I looked at nothing with a heart filled with anxiety. I was never destined to leave with a reassured heart and a pure soul, but I was always clouded by fears. My feverish imagination wanders around the ring, praying for the safety of Samia, Mustafa, Hamd, and Hisham, wondering in confusion what the outcome of this bloody conflict between the two most powerful houses will be. I raised my gaze to the blossoming garden of heaven and murmured, Be with us, O God of heaven and earth. The earth shone with the light of its Lord, and I saw a vast, flat desert and a tender summer atmosphere. I also saw deer leaping here and there, until I called it the deer desert. The journey extended for a month, and we endured pain that was not violent, promising good news. In the middle of the night, a voice announced to us that we had reached the borders of the House of Sunset. The moon was half past, and the atmosphere was clear, but I did not see a wall or a customs representative. The caravan owner said, laughing, this is a house without guards, so enter it safely and securely. So I asked him, how do I know the way to the Garaba Hotel? He said while continuing to laugh, the light of day will tell you what you are asking about. I waited in excitement until the sun rose. Perhaps it is the most beautiful sun I have ever known in my life. It is light without heat or harm, carried by a gentle breeze and a pleasant scent, and an unlimited forest spread out before me. But I did not see a building, a hut, a house, or a palace, nor did I see any people. A new mystery for me to discover, but what do I do with my belongings? I returned to the caravan owner and he said, put him in his place and do not be afraid. Go safe and come back safe. I chose a place close to the spring of water and made it a marker. I placed the bags and deposited the dinars and a belt that I girded myself with under the robes. I wandered around exploring. I walk on a grassy land, dotted with palm trees and fruit trees, interspersed with springs of water and lakes. At first, I thought it was devoid of people, until I saw the first human being squatting under a palm tree, an old man with white hair and a beard, silent and sleepy or absent, alone, without a male or female companion. So I approached him as if I had found a treasure and said to him, Peace be upon you, my brother. But he did not seem to hear me, I repeated the greeting and said, I am a traveller and I need a word to light my way. Nama did not call for him and he remained absent in his kingdom, so I asked him, Don't you want to talk to me? He did not show any reaction, as if I did not exist and he left me, so I turned away from him involuntarily and continued walking and every time I went deeper, I came across another person in the same situation, a man or a woman, so I tried again and was met with nothing but rejection or ignorance, until it seemed to me that it was a forest of deaf, dumb, blind. I took a sweeping, fascinated look at the beauty around me, and murmured, it is a paradise without people. I ate some of the fruit that had fallen on the ground until I was full, then I returned to my belongings and saw the merchants filling their bags with fruit without accountability or supervision. When the caravan owner saw me, he laughed and said, were you able to ask any of them to ask questions? So I shook my head in the negative, and he said, it is the paradise of the absent, but its bounties are squandered without accountability. I asked him with interest, what do you know about them? He said indifferently, there is an old man in the forest whom people go to. Perhaps he will provide you with what you are asking for. The traveller's hope revived again, and I said to him while I was intoxicated with the ecstasy of victory, how beautiful is the summer weather here. The man said, this is how all seasons are. I rose with the sun, active and optimistic, and I heard one of the merchants say, we will keep coming and going between safety and sunset, until the war ends and the roads are opened for caravans again. I set off into the depths of the forest, advancing without stopping until I heard the sound of collective singing. I turned towards the sound until my eye saw the sight of a group of men and women sitting on the ground in the shape of a crescent, in the hands of an old sheikh, who was taking his seat under a lush tree, as if he was teaching them to sing while they were repeating the sound. With great tenderness, I approached until I was behind them, and I looked at the man and saw an old man naked except for what was covering his private parts, as if a halo of light was staring at his bright face and attractive eyes. The singing or lesson ended, so the men and women rose and dispersed quietly. She was not a bride among the women, and I did not find her yesterday, but her scent was mixed with the smells of fruits and green herbs in the air. Only the sheikh and I remained in the place. 
I stood humbly before him, and he looked at me with his clear eyes, and I felt that I existed. The strangeness that suffocated me in the forest yesterday has disappeared, so I belong to the house of sunset, and the journey was not in vain. I raised my palm to my forehead in greeting and said, You are my lost one, my lord. He asked me while looking at my face, a new arrival. Okay. What do you want? A traveller who goes from house to house, after knowledge. He closed his eyes for a minute, then opened them and said, I left your home to find knowledge, but you deviated from your goal several times and wasted precious time in the dark, and your heart is divided between a woman you left behind and a woman you are diligently searching for. I was truly astonished and looked at him with fear, then said, How did you come to read the unseen? He simply said, Here they do that and more. Are you the ruler of this house? There is no ruler in this house. I am the trainer of the perplexed. I said warmly, increase my understanding. Everything depends on its timing. So I gestured to those around me and said, why do they not return a greeting or hear a word? He said calmly, their life here is consistent with the truth and a departure from creation. They look like absentees? Chapter on patience with the bitterness of calamity in order to realize the sweetness of salvation. So I thought about what I heard and then asked him, what is their purpose behind that? They are all immigrants and they come from all over the world to avoid the bad air and to prepare themselves for the journey to the abode of the mountain. I was delighted by the name and said happily, then I will find companions on my final journey. A smile appeared in his eyes and he said, you should prepare yourself like them. How much time does this take? Each according to his ability, and if one's energy is exhausted, it is advised to stay until sunset. My chest tightened and I asked him, and if he insists on going? It is feared that he will be treated there like a dumb animal. I was very confused and asked him, how do you prepare them for the trip? He said clearly, everything depends on them. I train them with singing to pave the way, but they must extract from themselves the strengths hidden in them. I said with confusion, I have never heard such words before. This is a new matter. So I asked him urgently, what does it mean to extract from myself the powers hidden within me? It means that every person has hidden treasures that he must discover, especially if he wants to visit the abode of the mountain. What is the relationship between this and the mountain house? He remained silent for a moment, then said, they there depend on these treasures for their lives, and do not use their senses or limbs. So I said with hope, could you give me an idea about these treasures? Do not rush. When will I know that I have succeeded? He said quietly, when you can fly without wings. I looked at it closely in astonishment, then said, impressed by its seriousness and sincerity, perhaps you are speaking to me metaphorically. Rather, it is the truth without anything more. The house there is based on these powers, and with them it is close to perfection. I said with determination, you will find me among the sincere ones. Your reward will be staying in the mountain house. I said hastily, it is only a visit, after which I will return to my home. He said with certainty, you will forget the world and everything in it. But my country needs me. He asked me in astonishment, how did you leave him? I made the trip with the hope that I would return to him with an experience that would save him. The sheikh said with resentment, you are one of the fugitives. I made the trip as an excuse to escape from duty. No one immigrated here until he had performed his duty, and some of them lost the flower of their life in prison for the sake of jihad, not because of a woman. I shouted in alarm, I was an individual in the face of comprehensive tyranny. This is the excuse of the lost. So I begged him, saying, let the past be what it is, so do not discourage me and do not waste my life in vain. So he remained silent until I considered the silence to be consent, and I took courage, saying, you will find me among the people of determination and sincerity. I stood up, bowing my head in reverence, and a thought came to me, so I hesitated, startled by his announcement, and then he said, you want to know what time has done to a bride. So I was astonished as I was when my past was lifted from the darkness, and I asked myself, is this how they interact in the abode of the mountain? As for him, he said, I have already reached the abode of the mountain. I asked him in astonishment, did you succeed in the experiment? He said with a smile, thanks to the pain she suffered in her life. When I was about to leave, he asked, 
what is the use of the dinars that you hoard around your waist? I returned to the convoy station and deposited the dinars in one of the bags. The caravan owner told me, we are leaving tomorrow morning. I said indifferently, I am staying. In the wake of dawn, I was the first to go to my master's gathering. A group of newcomers joined me, and we sat in the shape of a crescent, naked except for what covered our private parts. The sheikh said, love the work and do not care about the fruit or the reward. He was silent for a while, then continued his speech, the first step on the ladder is the ability to fully concentrate. He clapped his hands and then said, with complete concentration, a person immerses himself in himself. He started singing and we echoed his singing. Singing lifted me to another world. At every passage, a source of strength flowed from my conscience. I returned to my seat under a palm tree and began the experiment. I struggled to concentrate and he struggled with me. I engaged in a fierce battle with images of my past life. She invades me with love and loyalty, and I chase her with bitter hardship and the days pass filled with torment, determination, and hope. At the beginning of each lesson, before singing and chanting, he advises us to love work and neglect the fruit and reward, and says, this will strengthen the affection between you and the spirit of existence. He also recommends us to focus, saying, he is the one who opens the doors of hidden treasures. He says with certainty, there is, the abode of the mountain, with reason and hidden powers, they reveal truths, cultivate the land, establish factories, and achieve justice, freedom, and comprehensive purity. I return to my isolation, and I imagine the day when I will unleash my latent powers over every crookedness in my homeland, to create it once again a good place for good people. Days pass and I forget time, and I do not know how many days and months have passed, and my vessel is filled with confidence, and the sparks of inspiration shine in its darkness. One day I woke up before dawn, earlier than usual, and immediately went to the sheikh and found him sitting under the light of the stars. So I took my seat and said, here I am, my lord. He asked me, what brought you here? I said firmly, a call came from you to me. He said, satisfied, this is the first step to success, and the first rain is rain. We remained silent, waiting for the comrades to arrive until our crescent moon was complete, and the sheikh's face appeared radiant in the sunrise light. He started singing as usual, and we repeated the song, but we were not intoxicated with pleasure. Before we left him, he said, evil is coming, so confront it with the courage worthy of you. He did not add a word to that, ignoring our wandering eyes. We woke up the next morning to a commotion and the neighing of horses. We looked and saw torches spread over the ground like stars. We saw an army of knights and footmen encircling the sunset house without warning. Everyone rushed to the sheikh's location and sat around him, silent and calm. They sang until the sun rose, and then a leader came forward, followed by guards, until he stood in front of us. At first glance, I discovered that they were Dar Alaman's army, and I wondered anxiously, did they win in the arena? The leader said, in view of the ongoing war between us and the ring, and based on what we have been informed that the ring is thinking about occupying Dar al-Ghrb to encircle Dar Alaman, security reasons have necessitated that we occupy your land. There was silence and no one from our side commented a word, so the leader said, if you want to stay, you must cultivate the land and join the working humans, otherwise we will prepare a convoy for you to take you to the mountain home. Silence prevailed again until the sheikh broke it, directing his speech to us, choose for yourselves what you like. Then the voices started shouting, house of the mountain. House of the mountain. The sheikh said warningly, you will face trouble due to your lack of training. They insisted, shouting, Da al-Jabal. Da al-Jabal. The commander said firmly, whoever of you is found here after the convoy has arrived will be considered a prisoner of war.